Welcome back to Blue Line Patriot. Uh, so today, guys, we're going to be talking about the Bren 2 MS. It's basically an update video. I'm probably going to continuously do update videos with this uh, rifle until I get it, this pistol, until I get it, like, you know, exactly where I want it. Um, and who knows when that's going to, you know, end or whatever, because every time I get it to a point where that's exactly where I want it, I find something else on the market that I think would be a good ad. So I'm going to kind of talk about them and, you know, carry on with this journey of owning <clears throat> a Bren 2 MS, especially if you get out there and play with it. So I fired at this point less than 800 rounds, more than 700 rounds. I don't know exactly how many rounds. All right, some magazines were loaded to 30 rounds, some 15, some 10, some one, you know, uh, just depends. When you go out there and you train, you're dealing, you're doing all sorts of drills all different types of ammo counts so it'd be one thing if i could be like oh i went through 10 magazines well you know 30 rounds in each magazine and do the math and be like oh this is how many but it doesn't work that way so less than 800 rounds uh more than 700 rounds if i had to put in like my best guess on it i'd say like 730 rounds maybe somewhere around there it's my most accurate guess but the gun's running just fine. I haven't had any malfunctions, any, you know, any misfeeds, any hang fires, any stove pipe, whatever. Haven't had any any catastrophic things. Literally nothing. No problem with it at all. Um, I will say the action is just a t is like one percent gritty now. When you first get it, oh, it's so smooth, man. It's the smoothest fucking rifle or pistol I've ever ever dealt with like hands down so it's like it's that fucking smooth it's like ice smooth um but now you can feel like there's a little bit of grime up there i could probably get that out but you know i have to if i really want a gun i'll play with it if not it's working just fine so that's cool right anyhow um so after firing x amount of rounds i have discovered that my muzzle device is not a good choice for an 11 inch barrel so you have that and you're thinking about it forget it <laughs> i'm telling you so when i shoot this rifle i get a lot of concussion even back at my face and like i saw a video from uh colano colano or colian no or um he does like nra stuff he's got a youtube channel awesome guy check him out if you don't know about him blah 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 like them, subscribe them, all that sort of shit. But anyway, he did a video on a, you know, a Bren 2 MS. I don't remember if it was an MS or if it was a Bren 2, but either way, it had an 11 inch barrel. And I remember the thing he kept saying is like, this gun's cool. I think it looks awesome. I think it's, you know, it's dependable, whatever. But the concussion on this sucks. And I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. Let me tell you, after doing a little bit of training and a little, you know, some shooting and plinking and, and you know, paying attention to certain things, the concussion on this fucking gun, not my, not my favorite thing. Now, I will say, when you fire, the thing is, is that I went out and I was firing a, a 5.56 NATO, so that's your 62 grain uh, steel core round. So I was firing that and naturally, you know, that's packed with a lot of fucking power powder power power whatever anyway um so i was doing some sight work with that uh, you know just kind of sight work and screwing around and i was like man like that concussion really fucking sucks like after a certain amount of time like jesus christ it gets very annoying it's like a gnat you know at first it's like whatever but then like after a while it gets really annoying and so that's kind of what the concussion out of this is like. I'm not even kidding. You know, a lot of people um, haven't really mentioned that, and I'm kind of surprised in a way. I don't know. But anyway, um, let me tell you, this uh, muzzle break out of an 11-inch barrel is a terrible idea. So I get a lot of concussion even behind the rifle. So I understand what Noir was talking about now. It's like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I completely understand. Yeah, the concussion sucks. Uh, but anyway, so I'm like, okay, I have to control that concussion. And I can imagine if it's if it's like 
you know, a huge inconvenience for me behind the rifle, how annoying it must be for people to the side of me. Because every once in a while, you know, I'll be at the range doing some sight work and I'll happen to notice the reaction of the person next to me out of the corner of my eye and I'm like, ha ah. <laughs> sorry bro this is the gun range though shouldn't have sat there you should know better i was here first <sighs> so yeah anyway it, i'm like you know what in a team environment and here's the thing with this rifle and this is why i even bring this up is because my duty rifle is my duty rifle that's for work whatever this is more of my wrol rifle all right shit really goes fucking crazy um i'm going to this just because whatever happens, you know, my duty rifle is like, if I use that for like a home defense situation, odds are it's going to be like held up some, it's going to be like take, taken for evidence and blah, blah, blah. And it's going to take a long time to get it back. But if I use this rifle and it gets taken, then like, okay, cool, whatever. I'm going to get it back, but well, hopefully get it back. But uh, at least it's not my work gun, right? So that's kind of what this, this is. When life falls to shit and you need a rifle pistol this is the one i go to this is going to be my choice go to all right so uh it's potential it's possible you know uh that this gun gets used inside it's possible it gets used in a team element uh it's possible you know whatever all right so the thing is is like you got to mitigate that concussion or everything's going to suck real bad so to mitigate the concussion on my uh on my uh of my firearm here um, I'm going to be getting a Warden. Um, that's a Surefire Warden. And I'll, you know, when that comes in, whatever, I'll do an update here. This is what I was talking about, sort of a thing. But um, basically, it takes the uh, concussion and just pushes it forward. Instead of letting it go out to the sides, it'll still get out to the sides. But it won't be as, like, right now, if you were standing, like, here, like, I don't know, say at a... Uh, I don't know, four o'clock to somebody shooting. Like right now that would that would like depending on how close they were, it would suck to be next to that person. But with the cone, you can stand to a three o'clock or maybe even like a two thirty uh to the person shooting and you're not gonna be you're not gonna be hammered with that concussion. So basically you could be online with somebody um, and not, you know, destroy, not destroy them with your concussion. All right. So the concussion is going to get kind of, uh, taken care of with that warden. Now there's another thing that happens. Um, it's a, it's, I don't know. It's hard for me to kind of like, <clears throat> there's a lot of dynamics here. Another thing it does is this muzzle device does not do shit to maintain, uh, flash. I'll tell you that right now. Like, I have it on my duty rifle. I think it's awesome. It works just fine on a 16-inch barrel. I don't get any hardly flash on my 16-inch barrel. Um, I don't really get much concussion that I uh, can think of, can notice. But I do get a lot of flash um, out of this rifle, out of this gun. This is an 11-inch barrel, so there's more powder that didn't burn up yet. That also contributes to the concussion, whatever. But there's a blast element to that, too. Uh, you know, flash. There's a big flash. So... When you're trying to maintain your target and there's a bunch of flash, that means you can't really see your target so well, right? So if you're trying to track your target, and every time you fire off around, there's a big flash, um, you know, and concussion knocking you around, then trying to get back on your target and track your target, um, you know, becomes somewhat difficult. So to get rid of that flash, I'm looking for a, a dedicated flash suppressor. And I actually found one out of Surefire, which is good because then the warden can... Uh, mount to that mount to that flash suppressor it's a dedicated flash suppressor i forget exactly what it's called but i'm hoping with the flash suppressor the dedicated flash suppressor i'm hoping that'll kill the flash especially you know if i'm running maybe two two three i, I hopefully shouldn't have any flash or just have an extremely tiny amount and with the warden can screw onto that flash suppressor <clears throat> Plus, it's if I ever get a s actual suppressor for it, or silencer, or whatever, I can use the um, uh, same muzzle device to mount it. So that's cool. So I'm hoping with my setup now, with the warden and the flash suppressor, that the flash is maintained and the, uh, what do you call it, the concussion is maintained. So hopefully with that setup, <clears throat> everything will be golden. And I think that's another, like, 
I don't know. All in all, to my front door, maybe another $300. It's kind of like, you know, a little taken back on how expensive the, the uh, muzzle devices from Surefire were. Because I was looking at a bunch of them, and all of, every one of them I was looking at was like 60 80 60 These are like, I think for the Warden, it's like 120 For the Flash Suppressor, it's like 120 so together you're at 2400 and i don't know what for tax and shipping and not 2400 200 240 240 um but i don't know what they're going to do with tax and shipping and whatever so i'm like eh whatever but that's my next go-to that's what i'm going to get next so that should be nice um okay so moving back let's uh so we're done talking about the muzzle. I have my bullet points here, so I kind of stay on track as best as I can. Okay, so iron sights. Let's talk about iron sights. Um, a development that I've found with these sights is that the uh, front ones, I haven't tested the back ones, because this even, this, even this was an accident. But your uh, front sights here are not very um, strong. I'm trying to get you a good angle to see if you can even see what I'm talking about here. There you go. So you see how they don't quite match up? They're a little they're a little off. A little bit off my front sights. They, they don't quite match. Well, what happened there is before I got my um my my prism here, my primary arms 2X, um, I had my rifle, you know, standing up on like a drawer, and then it like slipped over and uh, this optic wasn't here at the time and it's smashed right on its front sight and so the front sight actually bent i've never seen a front sight bend before like that um, one of the ears not the actual sight but the uh the ears on it i've never seen them actually bend like that um so that was kind of you know odd to me so i had to get a wrench and jam it in there and bend it back and the whole time I was hoping, please don't snap off. Please don't snap off. Because it feels like the type of metal that would snap off if you weren't careful with it. So, like, if you do that and you bend it back, you run the risk of it falling off. I run the risk of it just falling off any day just from being bent that way, uh, you know, back and forth. Which kind of sucks because that means, you know, I'm really looking at the possibility of having to replace at least my front sight. Um... You know, so that kind of sucks. And they're like special sights, too. They like glow in the dark and whatnot. But I don't know. It's kind of sucks. But whatever. I'll have to see what happens with it. My light is still working. Tack light's still working just fine. Uh, this is the one I've had for a very long time. There's... Oh, wait a minute. That's not it. Did I? Huh. <laughs> I think I have the... The really beat up front sight on my AR right now, actually. <laughs> anyway, one of these uh, lights, I didn't have this one as long as I've had on my duty rifle. Uh, but one of these lights doesn't have the glass in it. And that's the older one. This one still has the glass or the whatever, um, you know, in it. So this isn't the flashlight I thought it was. But either way, still working just fine. Still doing all the cool shit it's supposed to. So it's kind of cool the way this works. I never actually demonstrated it. Let me take the time to do that right now. So this uh, uh, this flashlight, I forget what it is. Shorefire Streamlight. It's one of them. I can't. I, I always forget what the what the hell this is. Anyway, so there's a button on the back. I think those pressure pads, whatever, are kind of to me. They're kind of stupid because it's like, dude, just press the button on the back. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't. know. Your thumb's already there half the time. It's already in the you know, work zone, it's whatever. So anyway, um, this light by itself is a 500 lumen uh, light, takes two CR123 batteries. <clears throat> so, you know, it's lit up here, 1,000 lumens. Okay, that's cool. Now, if you click it once, you'll hear it click. Then that's your 500 lumens. Now, if you press it in uh, one time without it clicking, and then kind of like tapping it, and then a second time with it clicking, it'll go to strobe. See, watch. So I tapped it, I bumped it once, and it didn't click, and then I clicked it, and then I pushed it in all the way so it would click. It's like your double, your double, double click or whatever. So we just click it in again to shut that off. And then if I <clears throat> tap it twice, 
and click it on the third time, it'll go to 100 lumens. See how I did that? So this will give you a lighter, uh, you know, a, a dimmer output. Um, if you don't need all 500 lumens, whatever, you want to turn that, uh, you know, want to turn the setting down, uh, you're pretty much golden. So you just, so just uh, one click is your 1,000 lumens. Your double click is your strobe. And your triple click is your... 100 lumen so uh this light does a lot of cool shit and that's why i like it that's why i use it um so there's that it doesn't do um ir or anything i know there's other lights out there that do that which is kind of cool if you if you use night vision but um <laughs> my salary i'm not getting night vision uh so uh white light is equally as important so i'm still rocking my uh charging handle on the right side of the of the gun Contrary to popular belief, it works just fine on that side if you know how to run an AK. Anyway, <clears throat> I see a lot of videos and like there's very few of them on the other side. Um, now, being on the other side, don't get me wrong, I understand, I get it, feels feels cool, feels good, but um, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm just I'm just I'm just the AK type at heart, I suppose. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, so, okay, talked about all that sort of stuff. Now, uh, let's talk about the uh, the prism. That's like the newest, that's like the that's like the new hotness in this video. So, the 2X prism, man. I wish the light was a little bit better so, you know, you can get a better look at it. But you know what? There's other videos out there, and um, you really want to check it out, feel free. So, um, I know that I said the next video that I was going to do, uh, I was going to show you how to paint this stuff, but... What I kind of decided is, number one, um, I freaking love the way it looks with, like, this black magazine, the black lower receiver, and then, um, you know, a black sight. It's all this kind of accent stuff that's, like, black. And then when I get that um, new flash suppressor um, in the Warden, that's going to go on here, and that's going to be black. Now, I'm going to play around with the blackness for a while, but eventually I will... Um, Eventually, I will paint it. All right, so when I do paint it, I'll do... Well, I'm going to paint the... Uh, what do you call it? The, the Warden and the Flash Suppressor and uh, the Scope here. 2X. Oh, another thing about the 2X is that um, I actually went and got a quick detach. As you can see right here, it's a quick detach lever. So if I needed to get that off and throw it, you know, I could just take that off, whatever... You know, good to go. So I'll take it off, whatever. Pop my, uh, pop up my rear sights and and whatever. So let's see here. I'm trying to think of what I might not have covered just yet. Um, but yeah, guys, the uh, the two X is, is man, it's a great optic. It really is. Um, now, one thing I will say is like inside, you know how the reticle is supposed to look and blah blah blah. Well, for me, when I look through it. Like, no bullshit when I look through it. I see, I don't really see a uh, chevron. And I know it's there if I focus at the range. Like, if I'm at the range and I'm doing, if I'm aiming at a white target and it's a clear sunny day, um, you know, yeah, I'm going to see the actual chevron. But that's the only time I actually see the chevron. When I'm looking through here, I always see just a, just a red dot. Like, to me, it's a... You know, it's a circle with like a red dot inside, and that's just what I center on my target, fire off around, whatever. Um, so you don't actually see those individual. I'm trying to see if maybe I can give you a good view. Oh yeah, that, that kind of works. Let's do that again. Huh. I can't quite get it in the to the right eye relief. And the uh, reticle actually won't focus. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, so anyway, I bought this, uh, this reticle. I've been looking for it for a long time. Um, you know, finally found it. It's a 2X, and 2X um, actually does pretty good work. I mean, uh, for close range, it's not too in your face. I mean, you have one eyeball that's picking everything up and, you know, on, on 1X, and you got your eyeball and another you know in, in the glass here and that's picking up everything at 2x and it's kind of difficult to 
you know, to, to train to, because even I'm still kind of adjusting, and I, I, I don't know, I've had maybe 300 rounds through this so far with the optic, maybe a little less, but, you know, so I'm finding it kind of, it's not impossible, it's not difficult, it's just different, you know, and you have to kind of try and, I don't know, you just have to sort of train for it. It's definitely, definitely not like uh, using a, uh, using like a red dot it's different than that so um and to be honest with you guys i'm really kind of surprised how 2x makes such a good such a big difference uh for close things it's not too big of a deal but when you look at things like you know pretty far out all of a sudden they're like it's half the distance and you're like oh wow that's it's actually a very good um magnifier even a 2x is just nuts uh, so anyway, guys, um, that's working out just fine. Um, and what's this quick detach thing from real quick? I just want to give that info before. American Defense MPG. I can't really read it very well, but uh, I guess this uh, this lower, uh, not lower, but this quick release here. Uh, is made by American Defense, and it's pretty good. I mean, it's very similar to my uh, to my light, you know, to the quick release on my light. It's basically the same thing. It's just contoured a little differently, like this right here. It's the same setup. You just push down this little bracket right here, and then you pull, and it comes right off. So, um, personally, I just I love these um, these setups. They're great. <clears throat> so, uh, and of course, eventually I'm going to be getting a kill flash. Um, kill flash is basically a honeycomb looking thing that uh, you put here that alle alleviates glint and, you know, whatever else. The setting that I typically have on this, I almost forgot to tell you, the setting that I typically have on this is three. I'm trying to get some light in here so you can actually see. Man, why has it got to be so difficult, y'all? Yeah, so you can see right there, it's three. Okay, so it's on the third setting. Third setting is not very bright, but that's on purpose. Um, because when I'm out, uh, what do you call it? So say it's like a, a you know a sunny day, whatever. I'm looking through my sights. I'm going to see those black etchings very clearly. They're not going to go away. They're not going to disappear. Um, you could still see them just fine. So when it's super bright out, I'm seeing the actual reticles, you know, the black reticles. But if I take it from that into some low light, then there's still enough going on there to where when my black uh, sights kind of wash away, disappear, I start seeing that red, that, that red icon. So there's always going to be something there. Uh, for me to see whether I'm in low light or high light, I'm not going to have to make a big adjustment. Where like, say I'm outside and I have it, you know, super bright, which by the way, these go super bright. Um, I think they're just going to change color. Oh, that's the highest. <laughs> Let me go from lowest to highest. <clears throat> so right now, whatever, you're basically seeing like black. And then a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And it's crazy because this is getting extremely bright, like the fucking sun. <laughs> and just when you think it can't get brighter, it gets brighter. But let me tell you guys, uh, this optic, I can't wait until like this, like it's, you know, starts snowing like crazy. And um, we get a bright sunny day and there's snow everywhere. I'm going to crank this up to like its highest level and I guarantee you, you could still see it. That's when I have the biggest problem with any red dots or anything like that. Like when it's really sunny out, really bright and there's snow everywhere. It kind of sucks because you're like, fuck man, can't see my fucking sights because they wash out. Uh, but I don't know. I don't think we'll have that problem with this, this uh, optic to be honest. But we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. I know my aim point does that. I don't know if it's that the batteries get so cold or whatever's going on with it, but man, when there's snow everywhere and it's a nice bright day out, that that optic is worth gar it's worth shit. It sucks. But uh whatever, we're not talking about that. This isn't an aimpoint pro video. But yeah, I have that problem with that that optic and uh you know it's no good. 
But uh, I think, guys, I think I talked about everything. Oh, also, I bought this over the 3X because the battery life is, like, way longer. Especially the way I run my um, run my Optic. <sighs> you know, battery life can't really, can't really compete there. Plus, the difference between a 2X and a 3X, I don't know, 30 yards for every 100 yards. Not really a... Eh, I mean, it's enough to make a difference. Don't get me wrong, but... It still, still, still works the way I'm running it. Uh, so the kill flash I'm getting, I use the three setting, super bright, battery life is like excellent. Um, and yeah, as far as my um, my tape here, it's it's still working, it's still working just fine, no problems at all. Um, after all the rounds I fired, I haven't had this thing loosen up on me. I had it loosen up on me just a little bit. Like a tiny little bit, but uh, it's, you know, kind of re-solidified. So, I mean, by a tiny little bit. Even your best ARs will still have that much uh, play in it, like I'm talking about. Um, but I guess it cooled down or whatever, and it filled in the gaps it needed to fill. Whatever. Either way, it's still solid, so that's cool. Um, but, yeah, guys, that's uh, that's the latest and greatest. So, next thing coming is going to be my, uh, uh, my Warden and my... Uh, surefire well my they're both surefire the flash suppressor and the warden are both surefire so those are the next things i'm gonna next things i'm gonna get and uh you know with any hope it solves my uh flash and my concussion i don't i'm not certain if it'll solve my flash though because all the gases are still going to be in the same spot so i don't know it would be cool to see how the combination works because if it does work then I got myself a pretty good setup uh, going forward, so that's cool. And then eventually I'll do a, um, I'll do, I'll paint the uh, the warden and the flash suppressor and the optic, and maybe I'll do a magazine so it actually matches this color here. I might do that. I might buy, I don't know, two or three more actual uh, mat window mags here from Magpul and just paint those. Or whatever. I have a ton of extra magazines sitting in my closet right now, so maybe I'll just grab one of them. <laughs> but uh, either way, that'd be cool, right? I think it'd be freaking awesome. And then uh, I'll show you how they how we cook them and how the whole system. It's actually cool because uh, I don't know if 80 degrees is enough time. I think it is if I keep it in there for enough enough time. Uh, I was able to magically uh, discover a air fryer and i don't think air fryers are the same things as microwaves because i don't really know obviously i know nothing about air fryers right now but i'm thinking it's kind of like a mini oven and then when i paint these things i can put them in at 80 degrees uh which is not you know hot enough to like kill any plastics or any sensitive stuff that might be in optics because i was thinking i'm like man my uh, oven only goes down to like 170 degrees and I don't know if I can put an optic in a hundred I don't know if I could put this optic let it bake in 180 degrees 170 degrees um for like 20 minutes and let this paint do its thing like I don't know if that's how it works or not so um I found an air uh air cooker air whatever air fryer so I'm thinking it's like a little oven, and I know that it, I could set it to 80 degrees. So I'm gonna try doing that. I'm gonna let it sit in like I'm gonna cook this. I'm gonna cook the painted parts in confined 80 degree temperatures for I don't know maybe 30 minutes. I don't think that's uh, you know what maybe an hour because a typical day can be 80 degrees. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll cook it for a little bit. Get it all hardened, whatever, and I'll show you that whole process. But I think it's going to be an air fryer unless I find out that air fryers still send microwaves, which does crazy shit to metal uh, and electronics. So if that's the case, I won't be doing that. But if it isn't the case and it works just like an oven, then that's 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 the way I'm going to go about it. So I guess we'll find out in the next video. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. Um, 
this channel is just fun for me. I don't really care how popular or not popular it is. Just fun for me. But um, yeah, if you like the stuff and you want to see more, I got a lot more video weapon videos coming out. Uh, firearms, um, gear, you know, all that sort of mostly tabletop stuff. But I don't know. Maybe eventually I'll get into the field and, and film some stuff. Uh, just got to make... I don't know, do stuff on other people's schedule for a change. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. Stay safe, stay American, and I'll talk to you all next time.